in your life. Amen. Uh, before we begin, let's make a confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. The title of today's message is You Are the Salt and the Light of the World. In today's message, you need to truly find God's purpose for your life. The blessing of the identity that God has given to you. Really asking the question, who am I? Who am I? What kind of blessing do I already have possessed by God? How are you to live out the world as you look at the title today that you are the salt and you are the light? A lot of times we forget what true blessings are. You know, in the New Year's message, you receive the from message from Haggai chapter 2 verse 9. Let me read it for you. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. Many of us people think blessing are materialistic things. Blessing is being rich, having a good health, longevity, right? Materialistic things are blessings. But blessing is a person who enjoys God's blessing. You know, blessing isn't just me. I'm not saying those things aren't blessings. A blessing is a person who is able to use their life for the glory of God. Amen? If my health has nothing to do with God's glory, it means nothing. If all the riches I have in the accumulated in this world has nothing to do with God's purpose, it means nothing. Today, you have to understand what true blessing is. It is being used for the glory of God. Amen? Giving all that I have and all the purpose of my life being used for the glory of God. That is a blessed person. Blessed person. So let me ask you, are you blessed? Amen. Amen. I pray you will find the reason for that blessing here today in today's worship. Amen? Why? Because God says you will be the platform in which be used to save the world. Amen? We express this in this number, 237. To represent the 237 nations around the world, you are the platform in which to save the world. Amen? A platform, I'm standing on a platform right now. I mean, can you imagine if this is broken, weak, if this is shaking, right? I step on it, it crumbles under my feet. If the platform is not sturdy, you can't bring people on it. You are the platform to save the world, amen? If I'm shaking on my identity, if I'm shaking under the problems of this world and issues of my life, how can you be a strong platform to save the world? Today, you have to understand, the very platform which you stand on is made by Jesus Christ. Amen? In Matthew 16, 16, in the confession of faith we made, says what? That Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen? To that word, Peter, Peter's confession, Jesus says, On this rock, I will build my church. Amen? What platform are you standing on? Peter stood upon the platform called Jesus Christ. Amen? The unbreakable, sturdy rock that Jesus is, Jesus gave that blessing to Peter. And that's the same blessing we have the right to enjoy. The platform to save the 237 nations starts with Jesus Christ. Amen? And that's where you're standing. I mean, think about it. If your life is being used for that very purpose, I mean, we're all, most of us here, multi-ethnics from different countries. We all came for a purpose and a reason we have in our minds. And we didn't just wake up one day, bought a ticket to Korea and just come. Right? We all have a purpose in mind that why you're here. Upon any other reasons, you have to understand. The reason God brought me here is to save the 237 nations of the world. Amen? You know, one, a lot of people ask me this question. Pastor Tom, when are you going back to the States? When are you going back to America? My response is, only God knows. <laughs> I stopped planning. I stopped planning for my life. I did. Uh, when I first came to Korea, I said, three years. I said, three years. I'm going to stay here three years, receive training, and go back to America, and really, full, forward, full front, do my ministry in America, and save the lost out there. It's my fourth, I've been four year already, going on my fifth year in Korea, right? Well, I think I've been in Yewon Church for already three years now. I've been with you guys for three years already. Wow, long time. I mean, times are passing. You know what I realized about a life of a believer is that God has everything prepared for you. Amen? Amen. A lot of the times, the reason 
that we're not receiving the guidance of our Holy Spirit is what? Because of my own motive and my plan. This is what I want to do. God, make it happen. <laughs> this is how we pray. For your glory, but this is what I want. Make it happen, God. Right? You are supposed to answer my prayers, right? Make it happen, God. <laughs> we don't pray like that, right? Dear Heavenly Father, I pray you can do this. We pray like this, but ultimately, what are we saying? Do what I want to do. <laughs> make it happen. Right? Like if we're ordering a servant. Hey, here's, my, here's my, what I want. Make, I want it by a certain time. Okay, make sure it's ready. Like you're ordering around a servant. No, 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 guys. We follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Get rid of your planning. Get rid of your motives. Put everything in Christ. You'll understand that God has everything controlled, covered for the sake of the glory of God. Amen? And that's what we need to understand. My reasoning must be to save the world. My reason, my purpose must be to save the 237 nations of this world. You know, two major points that our church is headed towards. Number one is church consecration. And number two is 70 disciples. As Rosalie prayed during her prayer, these are the direction that our church is headed in year 2022. You know, I don't know if you guys understand, but Yangon Church is a church for world missions. Amen? Yangon Church is a church that God will use for world missions to pay off this building so that all the offering, all of the money that we have can be used to save not just the region of Gangseogu, not just save the region of Seoul, but to save the world. Amen? And that's the purpose in which we need to gather our strength and pray for every day. For that purpose, we're raising up 70 disciples. 70 disciples who can do this work together in, in their respective fields. 70 regions so that we can have this world movement taking place where all of our disciples are. And that's why you need to stand strong and find your reason and your purpose from the word of God. Amen? That is true blessing. Finding my reason and my purpose from the word of God. Why do you do the things that you do? Is it because of the word of God? Then you are blessed. Why do you spend the money that you spend? Is it for the glory of God? Then you are blessed. Amen? I pray that you will be blessed to live for the glory of God. Amen? Now you're giving God a reason. God says, now I will bless you. From now on. You know, the background of Haggai chapter 2 verse 9 was upon building of the temple of Zerubbabel. And it was delayed for 15 years. People thought, hey, we, before building the temple, we got to build our own house. Forget the temple. Let's build our own house that we can live on. And they delayed the building of the temple for 15 years. And hoping as they're prepared, now that the house is ready, their financials are ready, now we can do church consecration. Did God bless them the 15 years? The Bible says no. God did not. There were famine. There were drought. No blessing came upon them. But the moment they said they're going to live for the glory of God, God began showering blessings upon their life. Amen? In a way, God is waiting right now to pour down, open the floodgates of heaven to bless you in your life, but God cannot do it. He has to wait until your mindset, your heart matches the direction of God. Amen? So that no worries stop you anymore. Your fears don't stop you anymore. Your motives doesn't stop you anymore. We go towards the word of God knowing that God will fulfill the message that he has given to us. Amen? Living our life as the salt and the light, the first in this introduction, first thing you have to get rid of is what? My personal motives. Get rid of it. God, help me to get rid of all of my worries and fears. Match my life to your direction. Amen? That is how you live a life of true blessing. And just as today's title, you are the salt and the light of this world, how can we live out that amazing life of a blessed life? How can we do that? Number one, you need to remember this point. You are the salt of the earth. Verse 13 reads this. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under, feet, under people's feet. Now think about the characteristic of salt. Of salt, What is it? It makes food tasty. Have you ever tasted food without salt, without seasoning? 
you made all the food. You forgot to season the food. What is it? It's blend. It doesn't taste any good. You know, they say you know, too much salt is not good for you. you know, cut down on, on salt. You know. But I like to season my food. I like tasty food. If I'm going to eat, I'd rather diet. If I'm going to eat a meal, I want to eat a proper tasting meal. That's what, my, that's what I do. <laughs> so this is what my kids always say. Daddy's food tastes so good. Mommy's food is healthy, but not too good. Daddy's food, not so healthy, but tastes good. <laughs> that's what my kids say. <laughs> Because I season my food, right? Tasty, salty, spicy, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> you know, if you're gonna, I'm going to eat a meal, I'm going to eat it properly. I'll just go a run afterwards. <laughs> um, salt brings that kind of joy in, in what we eat. You see the characteristics. But another important characteristic of salt is preserves food. As you know, as we put salt over meat, over fish to preserve it. Uh, kimchi, <laughs> Korean major uh, Korean food. Kimchi, right? You put salt so that you can have it, eat it for a long time. It preserves. What does it mean for us spiritually? Spiritually, salt can be described as the gospel. Gospel restores our life. Amen? Gospel brings joy in our life. Gospel restores our life. Amen? When Jesus took upon, died on the cross, resurrected, he gathered his disciples on the Mount of Olives, and he talked about the kingdom of God for 40 days. The disciples, who were all scattered, running away, scared in their boots, finally saw the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. And upon that 40 days of hearing about the kingdom of God, their everything changed. Everything about them changed. So when Jesus says in Acts chapter 1, 8, he says, Once the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power and be my witness to the ends of the earth. Did Jesus give him hair? I got some money for you here. <laughs> the Koreans like to do that, right? Here, oh, yong don't you get? Money, right? Is that what Jesus did? I have a house that's paid off. Hey, don't worry. You can use that house. I have a land for you, right? I'll have um, guards to protect you wherever you go. Don't worry. Is that what Jesus said? No. Jesus simply said, Jesus, I am the Christ. Kingdom of God will be with you. Now go be a witness to the ends of the earth. That's what Jesus said. Jesus did not give him anything else. At the time when Jesus told him to do this, what happened previously? Jesus was crucified. Every one of his followers now proclaiming Jesus are going to face the same faith. And Jesus says, what? Go to the ends of the earth? The right thing he should have said was go hide in your rooms, okay? Just hide away. So watch out you know, what people say and, and just look around and just be you know, smart about it. <laughs> he didn't say that. He said, go be my witness to the ends of the earth. Amen? Jesus gave them the gospel. That's the only thing he gave them. And much to their surprise, gospel was everything. Amen? Amen. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be given to you as well, Jesus says. Nothing for you to worry about, guys. Are you lacking? Do you feel like you can't do things in your life? Jesus says, I have given you the gospel. That's all you need. 120 people after receiving that word gathered in Mark's upper room. And upon that, in Acts chapter 2, the day of the Pentecost happens. After that, guess what? From that moment on, world evangelization spread out through the world. The reason you understand the gospel is because of those people. The reason the countries that are represented here receive the gospel is because of these 120 people. That's it. God gave gospel to the disciples, 120 held on to that amazing covenant, and became the salt of this world to restore life upon this world. Amen? All you need, guys, is the gospel. That's what Jesus gave us. Gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Every time you think about it, it must be a good news in your life. The good news that brings joy and happiness and thanksgiving overflowing in your life every day. Think about it. Meditate upon it. We call this what? My 24. How do you spend your day? 24 hours a day. It must start with the gospel, must carry out with the gospel, must finish with the gospel. Amen? That's a life of living out the lifestyle of being a salt upon this world. God wants you to truly receive this answer. To know that what? In the gospel, everything is finished. Don't worry. 
Don't worry about that worry that you're having right now, that concern that, that's grabbing your ankle. In the gospel, it's finished. Do you think the disciples didn't have concerns? Do you think the disciples didn't have problems? They had problems. Financially, they had problems. Societal problems. They had all kinds of problems. To claim yourself to be Christian meant to be cut off from society, from your job. Would you do it if you know that if you're going to be fired from your job, you say you're a Christian? Would you let that be known? Disciples, that's exactly what they're happening. What about having relations with neighbors? Cut off. The moment you claim yourself to be Christians, you have to now live in fear. <laughs> and yet the disciples didn't care any for any of those things. Why? Because for them, gospel was everything. Amen? Gospel meant it is finished. Gospel meant it is more than enough. These are the 120 people that changed the world. So what is your spiritual state? <clears throat> That's the power of the salt, meaning the gospel. Gospel can change us. Gospel can do all things. But what is your spiritual state as you understand the gospel? He says here in the verse, but if salt has lost its taste, gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. It is the answer to all my problems. But if it's lost its taste, what is it referring to? People who's lost held of the gospel. People who lost held of the enjoyment of the gospel, they have lost their saltiness. They're no longer influencing the people on their life. Gospel is no longer being a joy in their hearts. Gospel is no longer bringing delight into their life as you would enjoy your food. Gospel is no longer saving the people around your life. The salt has lost its saltiness. Is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet, the verse says. How do we need to restore our saltiness, the question asks. How shall its saltiness be restored? Once again, guys, we need to bring back the joy of the gospel into your life. Amen? Amen. Think about it. What's the word gospel means? Good news. That's what it means. Why is the gospel good news? Because God decided... I'm going to come and this resolve the fundamental problems that you cannot resolve. People are born in sin, caught by Satan, in a faith and destiny destined to go to hell for all eternity. In that spiritual state, God decides to send the Messiah, the Anointed One. Christ, the Anointed One, comes. And as the prophet, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He opens up the way for us to meet God. As the priest, once and for all, he becomes the perfect, ultimate sacrifice. All the sacrifices done in the Old Testament pointing to who? Jesus Christ. He became the sinless, perfect sacrifice that is good enough for to resolve the sin of, of all mankind. Amen? And that's what Jesus accomplished. In 1 John 8, the reason the Son of God came was to destroy the devil's work. He came as the king, destroy the authority of Satan. Meaning, through Jesus Christ, we have absolute life in us restored. Amen? That's why when we think about Jesus Christ, we say, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're like people drowning in the water who cannot save ourselves. I mean, if somebody's drowning in the water, and if I tell them, hey, you're doing a good job, come on. You just move your arms, yeah, yeah, there you go. Take a breath, kick your legs, yeah, just a little bit more. You're almost there, come on. Are you, like, guys, you're making fun of him. Right? He's drowning. So what do you got to do? Here, come on, here, grab on. That's what you got to do. You know, a drowning person, if you jump in the water with it, you're going to die with him. You know, a drowning person will drag you down. So a person who's strong enough has to throw a lifeline. Here, grab on. And when they grab on, you pull, pull you to safety. Jesus is our lifeline. Amen. He is our lifeline that God gave to us. And in faith, we grabbed onto it, and we are brought to safety in salvation. You are blessed people, guys. Amen? Amen. Why would you lose your saltiness? Why? What worry in this world has lost, God grabbed hold of you, and telling you, lying to you, saying, hey, that gospel is not good enough for you. What lie in Satan is telling you right now to say that gospel is not enough? 
Let us get rid of all of our worries, all of our unbelief. Restore the saltiness of our life, enjoying the gospel so that we can save all people in our lives. Amen? Gospel will first save you guys, I'm telling you. When you're enjoying the gospel, I'm telling you, that emotion is true joy and happiness. Enjoyment of the gospel doesn't go, oh. <laughs> it doesn't do that. Enjoyment of the gospel brings, wow, thank you, God. Let me be used for your glory. I know I'm lacking, but guide me in my life so that I can live for you and for you alone. That's the kind of result you will have. Overcoming, transcending your weakness. Transcending the situation and the surrounding of your life. Satan says, this is your limit. Hey, that's all you can do. You're not going to be able to overcome that. That's what Satan says. It's true. We can't. But God can. Amen? And God says, we will be used for as the platform to save the 237 nations. Amen? Number one, first thing you need to remember, you are the salt of the earth. Amen? To simplify, salt means what? Restores our life. That's what it means. Through the salt, through the gospel, you need to restore your life so that not only do you save yourself, but you bring about joy and true happiness to others in your life. Salvation is the point I'm making. Number two, second point you need to understand. You are the light of the world. Verse 14 and 15 reads this. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all the house. Now when you think about the characteristic of light, and obviously, first thing is, it shines over darkness. Without light, you, you can't see. I mean, think about it. I told you, I, I've been to a, a cave and they say, the, the guy said, we're going to show you total darkness. And he turned off the light. And I mean, it was so dark. Literally, I, I put my hand, I couldn't see a, a centimeter in front of my eyes. Complete darkness. And I appreciate it. Wow, that's how important light is. <laughs> to really see what you're going. <clears throat> I mean, can you imagine just living in darkness? Terrible, right? But yet, that's one of the things characteristic light has. And of course, and another thing about light is it really is the essence of life, right? Lessons of energy, plants such as, and when plants are gone, animals are gone, all, all things are we're done. Right? Without light, life cannot exist. We know these characteristics. What are we talking about in a spiritual sense? Jesus Christ is the light of life. Amen. When the light of Jesus Christ shines upon your life, you are restored. In, you are restored. Amen? <clears throat> light of Jesus Christ. In other words, when the light of Jesus Christ shines, the forces of darkness are broken down. <clears throat> I mean, right now we got the light turned on. Right? You got right, one, right above me. Right? You see any darkness hovering here? <laughs> right? I mean, just right away. Moment, as soon as the light comes on, darkness goes away. It goes away. You don't see darkness kind of floating here in the mid middle of the air. You don't see it. It doesn't happen. Scientifically, it cannot happen. Same thing. Spiritual science says, when the light of Jesus Christ shines, the forces of darkness are broken down. Amen? Shine the light of Jesus Christ to yourself every day. Shine the light of Jesus Christ to all that you meet. Shine the light of Jesus Christ to your family, to your workplace. To the region that you live, that is the purpose in which you live. You are the lighthouse that guides the ships in to the safely to the dig and dock. If you are got the lights off, right? guess what? There's darkness. Darkness in Genesis chapter one one says there were in the beginning there was darkness, chaos, and void. Meaning what? The gospel light hasn't shone. In the place that you are standing, guys, every day, shine the light of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> shine the light of Jesus Christ, most importantly, to yourself. How? Through worship. Through worship. Restore worship in your life. Shining the light of Jesus Christ every day. Reminding yourself that Jesus is a Christ answer to all my problems. To the problems that I'm going through, the issues that I face, Jesus is the answer. He is everything. You're shining the light of Christ. I mean, what if, what if you're in your, in your problems and you're going through your issues? We all have our issues. 
And that issue is caught over your mind. And that, when the moment you wake up, you go, oh. And you start your day like this. Oh. Okay, I got to get up. I got to get ready for work. You wash up. Like, oh. You go to work. What are you doing? You're shining what? Darkness over your life. Oh, I made that mistake yesterday. Ah, oh, what did I do then? What are you doing? You're shining what? Darkness over your life. Somebody said something to you. Why did he say that? Oh, man. Why? What's wrong with me? <laughs> what are you doing? You're shining darkness over your life. And all things, every day, start with the light of Jesus Christ. The moment you wake up, Jesus is a Christ. Answer to all my problems. As you live out throughout the day, in everything that you face, connect it to Christ. Before you sleep, meditate upon the blessing of Jesus Christ. Shine the light wherever you go. Amen? That is what you must do. You know why? Because God has already made you into a spiritual summit. You know what it says in today's verse? It says, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. That's what Jesus did for you already. He shines the light upon you. The light is Jesus Christ. You didn't make it yourself. You didn't match two, two, stick, right? two, two sticks and made a fire and let the light happen. No, Jesus is the light. He shines the light over your life. And where has he placed you? He placed you on a city set on a hill to let the world see. Why? Because the light you have is so precious. It is the only answer that can save the lost in this world. So he put you up high, spiritual state, spiritual blessing God has given you. That's why we must be a spiritual summit. It would be foolish. I mean, like we put the light on top of on the ceiling. You don't put light like here <laughs> to shine the light to the room. We put it on top. One thing in America, a lot of homes, one thing that really, the, the architecture in America, they don't have no lights like this in the ceiling. <laughs> they have lamps. They have lamps. They don't have like ceiling lights. A lot of the houses don't. Much of you. Go to America, you'll see the houses are, <laughs> I was going to say, where are the lights? They're so, houses are so dark in America. It would be foolish to build those lights somewhere low. You, would you make a light, put it under a basket here, it says, put it on the table. That would be foolish. You put it on a lamp. You put it up high for all to see, to light the world, to guide them to the true blessing that is in Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, when I first went to church, uh, I was like, what, 23. Um, you know, pastor shared the gospel to me. I accepted Jesus Christ. And he would like to go to church. I said, sure. I went to church. And I went to that church, and I saw faces sitting down in the church. I was like, hey, I know that guy. Hey, I played basketball with him. Oh, I went to uh, drink with him. <laughs> oh, I know a lot of people here. And they were kind of very shocked to see me. Right? They're like, Tom is here. <laughs> They thought Tom would be the last person they, they would see in the church, okay? That's why they never shared the gospel to me. You know, five years I played basketball with this one guy. Never once did I even knew he was a Christian. <laughs> I thought he was just, you know, just a guy who likes to play and have fun. And the guys that I've seen at, at the, the, you know, bar, <laughs> <whatever>. <laughs> that I used to hang out, right? And I thought, oh, yeah, good friend that I know. They were so shocked to see me there, right? Are you shining the light of Jesus Christ where you are, guys? Let the world know the wonderful light that you have, right? If somebody's got a problem, when you sit down and talk to them, listen to their issues and say what? Hey, there's an answer. A light that shone in my life that changed my life. Let me share it with you, right? Be a witness. Witness unto the lost in this world, Amen. Because that's how precious you are. You are the salt and you are the light of the world. Without you, the world is lost. Because of the gospel Jesus gave you, we can save the world. In conclusion, that's the point. Save all the field. Verse 16, it says this. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Let your light shine before others. Okay, let others see the light that reflects out of you, the light of Jesus Christ. Don't hide it. Don't hide it. What kind of light others see in you? Is it a shade of darkness coming off of you? Shade of depression kind of coming off of you? 
like, oh, don't talk to him today. He seems like dangerous today. Right? Sometimes I come home, and uh, yesterday I come home doing all kinds of field work and not a mission, you know, evangelism. I came home around 4.30, and uh, there was a soccer meeting last night. So I came home, changed, got dressed, and I was walking out, and my wife came in, and she looked at me with a dead stare. <laughs> oh, kind of quietly walk out. <laughs> what kind of light do you share off, guys? <laughs> The death stare. <laughs> Let the light of Jesus Christ shine over from you guys. Amen? Amen? Because you already have the gospel. Because of the life of Jesus Christ in you. Enjoy it first. Enjoy it. Let that show to others. And I'm telling you, through that amazing action, God will be glorified. Amen? Let God be glorified through your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the message you've given to us. I mean, you bless our brothers and sisters that I gather here to truly know who they are. The identity, the blessing to be called as a salt and the light of this world. Help us to first enjoy it so that we can be a witness unto others. Shining light of Jesus Christ so that those who are lost in darkness may find their way to Christ to glorify your name. We thank you and praise you. Pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>